What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, December 31st, 2023, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Before I get into the breaking news, I just wanted to wish everybody a happy new year. I appreciate all of your support, and I wish you guys all the best in 2024. I wish you success, happiness, health, and wealth. And I know in some parts of the world, it's already 2024. But if you're like me and you're still in 2023, I hope you enjoy your New Year's Eve celebrations. I hope you pop a bottle of champagne and kiss your significant other at midnight and spend time with your family. It's very, very important that we spend time with our families in these times that we're living in right now. Okay, we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Things are really crazy. So make sure you're spending enough time with your loved ones. So major breaking news coming in this morning and last night. Another container ship was attacked in the Red Sea yesterday, late last night. And this is the first container ship to be attacked after Operation Prosperity Guardian was created by the Biden administration to keep the Red Sea open for shipping, the Maersk Hangzhou reported that they were struck by a missile while transiting the Southern Red Sea. The USS Gravely was dispatched to respond to the attack and in the process was attacked by two anti-ship missiles which it intercepted. The Maersk and Gravely were then attacked by Houthis on fast boats with crew-served weapons and small arms, after which the USS Gravely opened fire and sunk their boats and killed the crew. Okay, so if you guys remember, Maersk said they were not going to send their ships through the Red Sea anymore. And then after the Biden administration announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, and the international coalition that they were sending to the Red Sea so they could keep the shipping lane open, Maersk decided to send their ships through the Red Sea again, and now they got hit by a missile. Okay, Maersk is one of the largest shipping companies in the world. Okay, so uh, this is definitely going to shake their confidence a little bit in this Operation Prosperity Guardian, which uh, they did succeed in uh, sinking the Houthis that were on the fast boats. Okay. But they still did not prevent the container ship from getting hit by the missile. Okay. So they're not striking at the source, which is in Yemen. They're just intercepting these missiles and intercepting these drones, spending millions of dollars to do it rather than just striking at the source and not having to worry about it. It's just not really a smart idea the way that the Biden administration is going about this. And because of that, I think we're going to continue to see more of these attacks uh, on these container ships. And the situation there is going to continue to escalate until the U.S. launches an attack on Yemen. I think they're maybe trying to hold back from doing that just yet, but I think that's going to come. It's unavoidable. We currently have an E-6 Mercury nuclear war command and control plane up in the air. It's heading south into the Gulf of Mexico. It just took off from Tinker Air Force Base. These planes are responsible for remotely launching all of our Minuteman 3 ICBMs, and they're also responsible for communicating with our nuclear-armed submarines during a nuclear war. These uh, planes are responsible for transmitting the emergency war order which is the order by the U.S. president to issue a launch of the nuclear arsenal. So I want to just read to you guys the official statement from U.S. Central Command. Iranian-backed Houthi small boats attack merchant vessel and U.S. Navy helicopters in the Southern Red Sea. On December 31st at 3.30 a.m., the container ship Maersk Hangzhou issued a second distress call in less than 24 hours reported being under attack by four Iranian-backed Houthi small boats. The small boats originating from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen fired crew-served and small-arms weapons at the Maersk Hangzhou. 
getting to within 20 meters of the vessel and attempted to board the vessel. Okay, that's really close. A contract embarked security team in the Maersk Hangzhou returned fire. U.S. helicopters from the USS Eisenhower and Gravely responded to the distress call and in the process of issuing verbal calls to the small boats, the small boats fired upon U.S. helicopters with crew-served weapons and small arms. The U.S. Navy helicopters returned fire in self-defense, sinking three of the four small boats and killing the crews. The fourth boat fled the area. There was no damage to U.S. personnel or equipment. Okay, so this is really escalating, guys. And uh, this is the first report that they put out. This was at around 8.30 p.m., they reported that the container ship Maersk Hangzhou was struck by a missile. And then the Houthis fired two anti-ship ballistic missiles at the USS Gravely when it went to respond. So uh, this is crazy, guys. Absolutely insane. The 23rd attack by Houthis on international shipping since November 19th, okay? And here's the official uh, post by the UK MTO uh, when they initially uh, reported this ship being attacked. It says here, the master reports being attacked by three small boats on his port side. Shots were exchanged. All crew have been accounted for with no casualties. Thank God they had a security team on board. If they didn't have a security team. Uh, those Houthis would have boarded that container ship. So uh, very serious situation. And Russian diplomat Andriy Ordash said to Poland that the Kremlin will not give an explanation about the missile in Polish airspace and demanded concrete evidence that it crossed into Poland. So that is uh, crazy, guys. Russia is basically denying it and saying that they need evidence and they're not going to explain anything because they think it's a lie, basically. Uh, why would Poland make that up? I mean, you know, come on. Uh, two Polish and two American F-16s were scrambled when the Russian missile crossed into Polish airspace, but they failed to shoot it down. Why that is, we don't know, either because they were too slow to respond or they chose not to shoot it down for whatever reason. Uh, what's really strange is the Polish government is saying that basically this missile made a giant U-turn. It flew into Poland 40 kilometers and then turned around and left. Uh, I don't know if missiles can do that. I don't know if anybody out there has worked with missiles or missile guidance. Please let me know because that sounds like a stretch to me for a cruise missile to basically make a 180 degree turn. I've never heard of that. I know they can steer themselves and guide themselves to a target, but a 180 degree turn seems a little bit far-fetched. But regardless, Poland failed to shoot down the missile. And a lot of people in Poland and also uh, in NATO are concerned that Poland doesn't have a proper air defense. And experts are saying that Poland's air defense system is primarily concentrated around strategic locations and critical military bases. And because of that, they lack coverage along their border areas. And that's why Germany deployed two of their Patriot systems to southeastern Poland, which they just recently withdrew a month ago. Okay, so Russia is not stupid. They knew that Germany pulled their Patriot systems out of southeastern Poland. So they probably figured, okay, let's see what Poland actually has now. Now that Germany said that they removed their Patriot batteries, let's send a missile in and see what happens. Let's see what Poland is made of. Let's see how their air defense system is. It was a test, guys. Okay. And Poland failed. NATO failed. Um, you know, it's so stupid that NATO announces every move they make. You know, why did Germany make it publicly known that they were withdrawing their air defenses from Poland? That's just the dumbest thing. Okay. NATO is just completely messing up the response to this war in Ukraine. They're just announcing everything. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. 
we're in the middle of a war, guys. Okay, we have a major war going on in Europe, and these Western leaders uh, have no idea what they're doing. Okay, you have to treat it like a war. You can't tell your enemy everything you're doing. It's just stupid. Okay, uh, Poland apparently ordered a bunch of NASAMs and Sky Saber. Uh, missile defense systems from the UK and also Patriot missiles. And they're also developing joint Polish-British air defense systems, but they're still waiting to have all these air defense systems come in, which is going to take a few more years. They so far only have, I think, one or two Patriot missile batteries, and they're concentrated around Warsaw. And then some of their smaller Patriot batteries are scattered throughout Poland protecting key military sites, okay? Uh, Poland is also missing the AWACS planes, and they also don't have aerial refuelers. They just purchased some AWACS planes from Sweden, uh, but they still don't have aerial refuelers, which are important for uh, situations like this, where uh, Poland would have to keep their F-16s airborne for extended periods of time because F-16s have a small fuel tank. They go through fuel very fast. Okay, they can't carry massive amounts of fuel or it would slow them down. So escalations all over the place, guys. We have the Red Sea. We have Ukraine. Now Poland. This is the third missile to land in Poland since this war started. Okay, the first one killed two farmers. The second one landed just a few miles away from a NATO base in a forest. It had no warhead. It had a concrete warhead. Then there was some kind of an observation balloon that flew over Poland from Belarus, and now this situation. So it's clear that Russia is testing Poland to see what their air defenses are like, and this could be a precursor to some type of an attack, either on Poland or NATO or the Baltic region. You know, they're doing what's known as reconnaissance by fire. That's exactly what they're doing, okay? If you don't know what that is, you can read about it. Okay, recon by fire, you're literally shooting at your enemy to find out more about their defenses to see what they shoot at you with when they respond. So you see what kind of weapons they have, what kind of defenses they have, where they're located, etc. Okay, uh, we also had another U.S. base come under attack last night. Apparently, 40 missiles were launched at U.S. bases near the oil fields in Syria. This is being reported by Lebanese sources. The attacks reportedly resulted in casualties among U.S. soldiers stationed at the Conoco gas field and the Al Omar oil field in Deir Azor, Syria. Okay, 40 missiles. And I don't know if those are like rockets. I mean, missiles, that sounds like a lot. Um, but it's very possible they have launched ballistic missiles at U.S. bases before, okay? So this is very serious, guys. Bases getting attacked. Russian missile flies into Poland. Uh, you know, the situation in Ukraine spiraling out of control, okay? Massive missile attack on Ukraine, and then Ukraine responded with a massive attack on Russia the other day. Okay, so this tit for tat is going on now, and it's just going to escalate and escalate and escalate, okay, because one side is going to escalate more to match what the other side is doing, okay? So all these war fronts around the world are just spiraling out of control, okay? The Red Sea, all right? And if you remember over Christmas, the uh, Iranian militias launched an attack on one of our bases and three servicemen were injured and one of them was critically injured, okay? And we haven't really done anything about it. We've done some minor airstrikes, you know, responded here and there, but we haven't launched the necessary crippling airstrike, okay, to basically eliminate all these militants that are attacking our troops overseas in Iraq and Syria. And we have unconfirmed reports of a U.S. airstrike on Syria yesterday. Also, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, said that the war is at its peak right now and it will last many more months. He said the next main goal is to gain control of the Philadelphia Corridor, which is basically the Gaza-Egypt border. And he also threatened Iran and Hezbollah. 
He had some very, very strong words for them. He said, if Hezbollah expands the war, it will suffer blows it has not dreamed of, and so too Iran, okay? That is just crazy, guys, okay? Very, very strong words there from the Prime Minister of Israel. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing a 60% off sale for the end of 2023. And they're also doing a 25% sale on their four-week emergency food supply. To get these deals, you have to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. The link is in the description below this video. And their four-week emergency food supply is contained within two rugged watertight buckets. Free shipping is included. So you have a month's worth of food packed into just two buckets if you have to bug out, you can easily take those buckets with you. If you live in a small apartment, you can easily find a space to store two buckets and you're going to be set for at least a month. And this food is freeze dried, so it has a 25 year shelf life. It includes breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks. And My Patriot Supply is also running a 60% off end of the year sale. And to take advantage of that, you have to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to prepare with nyprepper.com. It's at the top of the page. You click on that and it'll take you to their general store. And you'll see here all kinds of prepping and survival products. They have MREs, they have 2400 calorie emergency ration bars, they have canned heat and cooking fuel, they have potassium iodide, survival seeds solar generators, solar panels, anything you can imagine, it's all in here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of their one month emergency food supply and to also take advantage of their 60% off sale across their entire store. And I'll leave a link in the description below this video. And we have Syrian sources reporting that 23 Iran-affiliated fighters were killed in Syria yesterday, likely by strikes carried out by Israel, and Yemen's Houthi rebels show no signs of ending their reckless attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea, the top commander of U.S. naval forces in the Middle East said Saturday. So that's very concerning. And the Wall Street Journal reported Saturday that the number of Israelis that have been evacuated from northern Israel has exceeded a quarter of a million. That is huge, guys, okay? A quarter of a million Israelis have left northern Israel because of what Hezbollah has been doing. So I think that we're going to see an attack on Hezbollah by Israel. Israel's going to have to do it. They said it multiple times. They have to deal with Hezbollah because all those people want to go back to their homes, okay? They want to live where they normally should be living, okay? 250,000 people, guys. That's insane. That's like a small city, a small U.S. city just moving away, okay? Imagine like, you know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, everybody just leaving the city. That's how many people. That, that left northern Israel. That's a significant number, guys. And Israel is not going to tolerate that. Multiple news outlets, including Ynet and the Eurasian Times, are reporting that the U.S. denied an initial request from Israel for Apache helicopters. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant made the request during his meetings with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin last week when he visited Israel before Christmas. And security sources suggest that a final decision on the potential acquisition has not been made and that Israel is continuing to apply pressure. So this is crazy, guys. The U.S. doesn't want to sell Apaches to one of our main allies. Okay, Israel is one of our top allies. And I want to update you guys on the situation in Ukraine. So the death toll of Russia's massive missile attack on Ukraine on Friday has risen to 41, 41 people killed. And this is officially the largest missile attack on Ukraine since the start of the war, guys. And the mayor of the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, 
Vitali Klitschko, former heavyweight boxer, reported that 31 civilians in the capital were injured, 17 of whom were hospitalized. He said the December 29 attack has been the deadliest for Kyiv in terms of civilian casualties. Klitschko said on December 30th, announcing that the death toll has rose to 16 people. Okay, so this is the deadliest attack on the capital of Ukraine, okay, and the largest missile attack on Ukraine since the war started. So what a way to uh, go into 2024, and I think this is just the beginning, unfortunately. And several apartment buildings, warehouses, an office center, a residential house, and a metro station were damaged in different neighborhoods of Kyiv. The number of wounded from the Russian missile strike against the Palace Hotel in Kharkiv last night has increased to 26 people. The hotel is one of the most popular places to stay at for foreigners, mainly journalists, humanitarian volunteers, and politicians. So Russia attacked this hotel last night, if you missed my update, They attacked this hotel and they claim that that's where Western intelligence was hanging out at. But really, it's for journalists and humanitarian volunteers and politicians. And uh, there's more casualties today. Uh, Russia and Ukraine are exchanging uh, blows, so to speak, today. There's uh, drones flying into Russia that were intercepted. Russia is launching missiles at Ukraine today. So it's still continuing, guys. And the Russian Ministry of Defense is now claiming that 12 people were killed and 108 wounded in Ukraine's attack on Belgorod. That was their retaliatory attack on Friday night. And according to the governor of the Belgorod region, 21 people were killed. And according to the governor of the Belgorod region, 21 people have been killed. So some discrepancies there. And earlier statements from the Russian Ministry of Defense said 13 missiles were intercepted over the Belgorod region. Now they're saying that only two missiles were intercepted. And they also said that they intercepted 32 drones from Ukraine in this attack. And central Ukraine was hit last night. Apparently power lines and infrastructure were targeted And today there is ongoing shelling and missile attacks between Russia and Ukraine. Russia reportedly shot down three drones over the Rostov region and several S-300s were launched at Kharkiv. And what you're looking at here is the Danish foreign ministry. And they're reporting that they have officially sent a frigate into the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden to uh, prevent Houthi attacks on the international shipping lane. Okay, so Denmark is now sending uh, one of their ships. And here we have some video footage that came in from Syria. This is a U.S. base here, and they're firing some CRAM uh, anti-rocket systems at all these rockets or missiles that were coming into the base, apparently 40 of them. And if you don't know what a CRAM is, it's basically a high caliber machine gun, usually 20 millimeter or greater. And it has a special targeting system where it can basically track a projectile and it'll automatically lock onto that projectile and fire the machine gun to destroy it in the air. So here you can see the CRAMs in action. So Uh, It looks legit, guys. It looks like our bases were hit last night with dozens of rockets, apparently. Okay. So that string of lights there, those are the uh, actual bullets from the machine guns. Okay. And these are giant machine guns bigger than your finger. And these bullets are like the size of your finger. And they have phosphorus on the tip so they can see the trajectory okay so these are what are known as tracer rounds so that's what these streaks of lights are so that's what these light streaks are these are literally uh probably hundreds if not thousands of bullets flying through the air uh in a string trying to 
intercept these uh, missiles or rockets that are heading towards the base. So that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I will be back later with another update, so make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell icon below so you get notified when I post these updates. Wanted to just wish you guys again a happy new year, a happy New Year's Eve. Enjoy your day, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll be doing a live stream later or not. I'll see how I feel. I have to spend some time with my immediate family as well. So until next time, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.